for our cheer? Let's do it. You ready? Pinot, Chardonnay, Cabernet, and Turtle. Yes, Dana. I'm not sure where that just came from. <laughs> Dana is teaching us the art of making good wine. Good morning, Dana. Yes. Yeah, good morning. So, hey, I want to know, Sean and uh -huh. Marshall, what's your favorite kind of wine? Mm. I love I'm more, red dry wine. I'm, I'm more of a red. Mm -hmm. So, we've been into blends lately. I do that as well. Malbecs, Yeah, Maritage. the blends have been really good, but mm -hmm. um, I tend to lean toward a cab that needs a knife and a fork. Ah. Cabernet, so they like yes. red wines. See, I like white wines. I do. And, you know, I'll tell you why I like uh, white wines better, because red wine stains my teeth. And it can make you feel not so good the next day. Yes, that's very true. But it's all about moderation, people. Let's be real. Moderation. All right. Well. All right. Yeah. So we've got a lot of red wine right behind us. So let's get right to it. Down here. Oh, we're, we're going to migrate over this way right here. So this is where Marshall and Sean would be if they came in here to Camelot Wines. Yes, definitely. This is like the cabs, the Pinot Noirs, that kind of stuff. Um, pretty oh. dry and fruit. I think that we're going to have to grab this bottle right here and fill it up. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Or later. maybe Sean was already in here because there's one empty and there's a few more that are empty right there. Okay, so the whole thing that's cool about Camelot Cellars is that you can come here and you can make your own wine. Yes. Um, you can also adopt a wine or grab a wine off our wall here. Um, behind here we have empty bottles, so you can put your own label on it if you don't have time to make wine. Oh, okay, so that's the whole point of doing that and keeping some of them um, empty. So can you design your own label to go on it? You know, say, I mean, let's be honest, Christmas is like 100 days away. Yeah, I mean, but now's a good time to start thinking about it, I think. Did you hear that, people? Now is a good time because when you make wine, you put the yeast in, and it takes a few weeks for it to, you know, ferment and, you know, produce the alcohol and all that before you can bottle it. Yeah, and then you got to schedule a time to come back and bottle and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, and it's very cool. Like, if, Ed, when you flip around, you can see, like, this whole area where wine is fermenting in that back room. And those great big jugs, or they're glass, I guess, that's where the wine ferments? Yes, so the big jugs are full 30-bottle batches, and then the smaller ones are 15 bottles. So you can pick from those two different sizes. Okay, like, how much does it cost if you want to make wine? Like, how many bottles could you make? If It starts around, like, 199 um, but that includes every Thing, and it also depends on what wine you get. Yeah, very true. And then you guys have gatherings and stuff here too, like there's room for parties and whatever. Oh yeah, definitely. We have bachelorette parties here all the time. They'll come in, taste, make their own wine. They get a little crazy, but it's fun. Yeah, I bet. Okay, so we're out of time. Camelot Cellars here in the Short North. Alex, thank you very much. You. I've enjoyed. We made a, an Australian Grenache Rosé. That's why I wanted you to say that. <laughs> and it's going to ferment now for the next, what, three months? Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> maybe well, like a couple of weeks. Okay, so it will be ready for Sean and Marshall to taste by Halloween? Ooh. Um, close to that. Yeah, you guys can definitely come in and taste it. That will warm you up when it starts snowing by then. Oh, t uh, see, now I can't even go Not there. Nice. Wow. <laughs> All right, thanks, Dana. You know, right? Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thanks, Dana. Did you say snow bike? I think Halloween. What? Oh. We'll be right back. <laughs>